Your name is? Uh, Michael Antiporta. Antiporta. Okay. Fourth time laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery for remediation of a multi found duplication failure. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have no disclosures. <clears throat> the patient is a 27-year-old male who had undergone three prior laparoscopic hiatal hernia repairs with Nissen fund duplication with recurrent reflux symptoms and imaging findings of RAP herniation. Uh, he was referred for us consideration of a revisional operation. Past medical history is shown here and otherwise unremarkable. He underwent high resolution motility testing, which showed a degree of ineffective esophageal motil uh, motility with 50% failed swallows with a mean DCI of about 300. Uh, his upper GI showed posterior wrap herniation and spontaneous reflux up to the mid esophagus. He had also undergone a nuclear gastric emptying st uh, study, which was negative for gastroparesis. With these studies, we recommended a revisional operation to repair his recurrent hiatal hernia, take down his uh, prior Nissen, convert it to a toupee, and perform a stam gastrostomy. Uh, ports are placed, as shown here, with uh, centering around the left mid-epigastrium. The operation commences with lysis of adhesions of the stomach to the underside of the left lobe of the liver. Adhesions to the left cruse are taken down and the mediastinum entered. Uh, next. Uh, we <clears throat> make a window at the base of the left cruce, uh, shown here. Uh, we uh, pass a pen rose, which will be used later to encircle the hiatal contents. Uh, the fundus is completely mobilized with transection of any remaining short gastric or posterior gastric vessels, and the posterior peritoneal fold is dissected. Pen rose is then used to retract the hiatal contents and facilitate dissection at the base of the crura. Uh, we enter the posterior mediastinum here. Dense adhesions in the mediastinum are dealt with using careful dissection with a low voltage monopolar cautery as well as a, an ultrasonic energy device. Uh, we perform extensive mediastinal dissection up to the level of the inferior pulmonary veins uh, in order to maximize length of uh, intra-abdominal esophagus. Once the mediastinal dissection was complete, we turned our attention to taking down the prior fund application. Uh, this is done with a combination of cold scissors as well as, again, low voltage monopolar cautery. Um, throughout this operation, we um, minimize uh, very much any, um, any blunt dissection to minimize um, any blood loss or possible injury to the stomach or esophagus. Uh, once the <clears throat> wrap is uh, taken down completely, um, we're able to eventually establish uh, normal anatomy. Um, as shown here, we tuck in the fundus back up into the left upper quadrant. Uh, we perform flexible upper endoscopy to uh, confirm the level of the GE junction and also to ensure that we hadn't caused any injury to the esophagus or the stomach with our um, dissection. Uh, <clears throat> here, the right cruise is detethered from the inferior vena cave in the caudate lobe. And we enter the left pleural cavity here intentionally with an ultrasonic energy device um, in order to induce a intentional capnothorax. Um, this helps with uh, reducing tension on the crura when we perform a hiatal hernia repair. Uh, we place a red rubber catheter into the left pleural space, which will be used to evacuate the capnothorax at the end of the operation. Uh, here we uh, rep begin approximating the, cru uh, the crura. Um, this is first accomplished with a zero silk and interrupted fashion, um, and all our knots are tied intracorporeally. Uh, next, a horizontal mattress stitch of zero ethibond is placed, incorporating a strip of biosynthetic mesh. Um, with this closure, we are able to approximate the empty esophagus without constricting it. Uh, next, the pliability of the stomach tissues uh, assessed for use in a repeat fund application. 
Uh, with the shoeshine maneuver, it becomes apparent that the fundus is too fibrotic to permit a loose 360-degree fundoplication. Uh, that in combination with the preoperative HRM showing um, a degree of um, ineffective esophageal motility, we decide that a posterior partial fundoplication would be best for this patient. Uh, we therefore perform a two-pay fundoplication uh, using three uh, sutures of zero silk for each pillar of the rat. Uh, care is taken to ensure that um, the anterior gastric or anterior vagus nerve is preserved. Once our final stitch is uh, completed, we remove the Penrose uh, drain. Uh, due to the recurrent nature of the patient's fundoplication failure, we felt that he would benefit from um, some gastropexy and also um, to assess with any um, possible delayed gastric emptying after manipulation of his G junction, so a gastrostomy tube is placed. Uh, 20 French Foley catheters used for this, and then the edges of the gastrostomy are imbricated uh, using zero silk. Uh, now that that's complete, we uh, evacuate the cabinothorax um, using a red rubber catheter, remove the liver retractor. Um, upper GI on post-op day one showed optimal wrap positioning and no leak or obstruction. Um, when he started on clears, he was discharged on post-op day three on a blunderized diet. Uh, he was seen in clinic on post-op day 27 um, without any reflux symptoms and without any dysphagia, and his G-tube was removed. Uh, in conclusion, this case illustrates our approach to um, taking care of the multifundoplication failure patient um, who has a reconstructable deformity at the G-junction and primary complaints of recurrent reflux without dysphagia and amenable anatomy to undergoing a redo fundoplication. Thank you. Okay.